Kahaloyim Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders who of great millstone who rule all over the flock. Shalom, salutations to you brothers out here, preaching words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the Akim and the Agwa for listening. Scattered abroad, Israelites paying attention, understanding that these are the end times, and we're supposed to take heed to the words of the prophets of the of the Lord and the prophecies of the Lord concerning Israel, concerning America, concerning destruction, concerning salvation. Shalom. This is a video I was checking out after I typed in GMS testimonials. I just typed in GMS testimony. All right, because I wanted to hear what some brothers had to uh, had to say. And it says this brother with GMS testimonials visions five made it beautiful video. Um, about, you know, his woman had a vision or a dream rather in which, um, about his brother who was uh, dealing with incarceration issues for a long time, which is uh, actually, you know, true to this brother outside of the dream. And, um, you know, the brother just going into how, um, going back and forth within the truth, you know, what actually happened in real life and, and what the dream was symbolizing, which is that um, his you know, his, his, his family member who was incarcerated um, didn't take heed to um, what the scriptures were saying. You know, if you got a, a close, immediate family member of yours, more than likely they know what you went into, right? They know what you're about. And because his uh, family member didn't, didn't take heed and wasn't serious about this word, um, he was given some type of, um, long, long-term sentence and judgment was passed down because, you know, as we know, Yahweh Bashim Yashah don't play. Now here's a scripture I want to bring out, um, which is Hebrews 4 and 2. And let me start at one. Let us therefore fear. Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it. So think about that. The promise that we hear about in the scriptures and they hear about in the scriptures and the world hears about in the scriptures of entering into his rest, the father's rest. If you don't come with fear, if fear isn't a part of your belief system in hearing this about this rest, and these promises, then you can possibly come short of it. Meaning you can hear about it, but never obtain it. Now that should make you think of an event that happened in the scriptures. Um, but I go on and I'll bring out which event that was, but ultimately that that right there, this line should make you think of directly of a specific event that happened in the old testament. Which has a lot to do with that first verse. Verse 2 says, For unto us was the gospel preached. You know, the gospel is the good word. As well as unto them. And so, you know, at this time, Paul was dealing with, um, Paul came from being a, a Pharisee, uh, which was a strict sect which was known as the circumcision. He was of, of the men who was all about the law and persecuted the church, people preaching of Yahweh Shah in a resurrection, something that they didn't believe in. And then he became, uh, through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Shah, he became um, brought into the fold of the believers, the fold of men who believe in the words and in the promise and have faith, right? So he's talking about for unto us was the gospel preached because first the gospel came to the Jews at Jerusalem and then it was preached unto the Gentiles, which are Israelites that dwelt in other lands, Israelite foreigners. So that's that part right here. So it says, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it, but the word preached did not profit them. 
Lord Willie, Will Willing, the video subject is about didn't did, did not profit them. How does the word not profit them? You know, as a brother's going into his situation with his 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 uh family member that's incarcerated, and how the word came out to him, and even in the dream, the word came out to him, but the brother was just caught up on something else and other things, and and then eventually it got to him. Well, that's how it is when this word is preached unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. It says not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So that's the bottom line here. If you don't have, if it's not being mixed in with faith, even though you hear it as we heard it, it won't profit you. See, we always get into the fact that there's a spiritual block. Isaiah 6 and 10 is a spiritual block where men cannot obtain this truth. The Lord said it wasn't meant for them, but it was meant unto for you so that you would hear it. Right. And you would believe and you would repent and you would return and convert and you would be saved. But unto them. Right. Because you got to come to this word. And when it's mixed with faith, Yahweh said it's like a. Man that has found the treasure and sold everything he had to obtain this one treasure. It's the faith that causes you to see this truth for treasure and not just another word. See, men always like to bring in other books and other religions and say, well, the Bible is good if you look at it at a, a story like, you know, or the Bible is great if you don't. See it literally. See that it doesn't it doesn't profit them because it ain't been mixed with faith. When you mix this word with faith, this gospel preached profit you to the point where when it's mixed with faith, and then you have the fear that the promises will come to pass for those that believe, and you won't come short of it. Quick, quick, um, quick thing I want to show brothers. If you ever get lost with scriptures, this is for the brothers that I teach. You hit that tools button, you go down to cross references. And then they'll give you everything you need. Well, a lot of what you need, which is right on point. I use it all the time. So let's start with um that that whole circumcision thing I was speaking of. Um Acts 3 and 26, unto you first, Yahweh raised up his son, Yahweh Shah, sent him to you, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. And this is dealing with the Jews at Jerusalem, right? Remember this famous saying from Yahweh Shah that um, uh, go not into the ways of Samaritans, uh, to the Jews first, right? So these are just more proof that Yahusha went to the Jews in Jerusalem first and they didn't hear. And then he began his travels and his mission elsewhere. Um, yeah. Let's go on. Because I don't want to get it too much off the point. Romans 10 and 16. But they... Have not all obeyed the gospel? For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. You hear the word. It's different than any other word you heard. Even though you've been in church all your life, it's still different than any other word you heard. And it's like a yearning to hear more. But... The reason why there's no obedience in the other others who hear it because they didn't believe the report. They're not believing it. There's no faith in it in them. It won't profit them. They're hearing it, but it won't profit them. See, hearing enough isn't enough unless it's mixed with that faith. That faith is what makes it profit you. And we know it needs to be profitable, right? It needs to be profitable. It says, but it needs to be taught first. 
It says, Romans 2 and 25, where circumcision verily profit. If it's going back to that debate, that long-term debate. Remember when you read in the Old Testament, I mean the New Testament, there was a great debate, long debate about the circumcision and the uncircumcision, which is what we call the day the Gentiles and the Israel. Or the natural Gentiles, I mean, of Israelite foreigners and the Israelites and the Jews of Jerusalem. There was a great debate going on at that time. You're not circumcised. You, your name is, you have a Greek name. You live, you dress like a heathen. That was a great debate. And that man was told by a lot of Jews at Jerusalem that he couldn't worship. He couldn't, he couldn't, this word wasn't for him. And he was excommunicated because he had a Greek name or his father was a Greek and whatever. He had certain Greek customs, right? Certain Roman customs, Romans 2 and 25. And they did this even though the Romans and the Greeks was ruling over them at that time. And they were taking bribes. So it was very hypocritical for the, those of the circumcision to point out the uncircumcised faults and not their own. And that's why Yahweh Shah, ultimately, they, that's why they wanted to serve him. And they did because he was exposing their hypocrisy. Romans 2 and 25, for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision, which leads to faith, which leads to now. Now that you know you are a breaker of the law, the more laws you understand, the more you understand. You can't profit by the circumcision unless you keep all the law. And the fact that you can't keep all the law. Well, I can keep uh, most of the law, but that's cool. But you can't keep all the law. The fact that you can't keep all the law means that circumcision is not going to profit you. Now, don't get it twisted. Faith without works is dead. But the works that also that is talking about is charity. What about the um, greatest commandment? Uh, love the most high with all that uh, uh, soul. Right, and then uh, do do unto others, which is your brothers, as you would them do unto you. Love thy brothers, right? Love your neighbor, and so which is the whole fulfilling of the whole law. So it's how you treat the brotherhood, which is also exercising uh, true worship and true, you know, true belief in works. And deeds and, and ultimately prophesying and teaching so that our you know the flock and the elect can hear they gotta hear this word gotta be pro broadcasted right so it says so we understand now if you're not coming perfect in the law you if the law ain't gonna profit you right it says and though I bestowed all my good, so you can come to somebody that practices the law, law, law. They all about the law and teach them about Yahweh Shah. If they don't mix it with faith and they just say that's great, but you know the law, I'm 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 going through the law. Y'all can talk that Yahweh Shah talk. I'm a I'm gonna just keep on doing the law because the Old Testament say the law and we still under the like all right, we are still under the um old covenant. That's right. But the Lord is making a, a, a new covenant in which he started already, in which he sent his son. It hasn't been perfected because we know there's certain promises that come along with, with turning back and believing on the Lord. Post-captivity will be in our full glory. But at this point in time, yeah, the, 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 um, the, some of the curses have been lifted and that we are returning back to the, who we are, right? The, the, the sinews. And the flesh is coming back upon the skin. We can now fellowship together under the vibration of the true name of Yahweh Bashem Yahshua instead of Jesus Christ. We could we could pray to the name, the true names now. We we can turn from the our fleshly carnal minds into a spiritual and walk in the spirit and walk with faith now. That's a blessing that came with getting the name. With getting the understanding of our nationality, with getting the understanding that we cannot keep the law perfectly, and therefore we need to rely on Yahweh Shah, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakwadash, and that Holy Spirit that worketh within, within us daily. Scripture says, renew your minds daily. Right? 
It says, put on the breastplate of hope and salvation and, and a helmet of salvation. So this thing is, is, is heavily faith-based, heavily. And the rewards is for those that believe. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, 1 Corinthians 3 and 13, 3 and 3, 13 and 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. See, in the scripture, it don't necessarily tell you about uh, in the Old Testament. There's no law on check. There's no law on charity. There's, you know, there's no law on charity. It's not that it wasn't recommended ever in the Old Testament, but there's no law on it. You don't get in trouble for that. You don't have to, you don't have to put a sin offering because you didn't give out of the kindness of your heart. But in the New Testament, you see the value of charity. Scripture tell you charity covered for multitude of sins. That means it's an atonement, along with the number one atonement, Yahweh Shah's blood. And then you got to believe on that. Um, First Timothy four and eight: For bodily exercise profiteth little. We're talking about things that profit you. There is profit in. Uh, <clears throat> There is profit in, in keeping of the law. The law is holy and the law is perfect. There is profit, but it's not. It's no. It's no profit unless you keep it fully. Meaning you won't. You'll be destroyed eventually, right? Just like bodily exercise. Exercise is is all types of profits. And little by little, you can see it over time if you keep exercising. You feel healthier, you feel better, and so forth and so on. So, but godliness. Is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. Let's go on. Hebrews 4 and 6. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entereth not in because of unbelief. And this goes back to Hebrews 4 and 1. Who is who is it that this makes you think of? What event? The event is when Israel was dwelling in the wilderness and they chose to not believe that the Lord would bring them through. Remember, they was in the wilderness for 40 years and the ones that did not believe didn't get to enter into that rest. So for that was a for basically a, a foretelling of future events. Or you can say that that event is repeating itself nowadays for the those that those that don't believe and still don't believe that they will enter into the rest. They put off the day of the Lord. They settled upon their lease. Their job is too good. Their family situation is too good. They're not um, exercising faith by rehearsing the righteous acts or um, hastening the day and praying for salvation. They're not doing these things because. They're settled they're in their minds where it all starts, where their belief system is, in their minds. They don't need your house anymore. They don't need these promises of rests or they just don't believe them that they'll be coming in their lifetime. And they have their reasons why they don't. But we, we who are fervent in this truth and this word mixed with faith have all our reasons why we do believe It's just that, that simple. Let every man be persuaded in his own mind. Right? So he was 4 and 6 again. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Just like in the wilderness. All those that were from, that were delivered from uh, Egypt. Didn't get to make it into the promised land and cross that river, Jordan. But the ones who did were the children of those unbelievers, right? Hebrews 3 and 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living power. You got to take heed, meaning watch, be careful, tread lightly, be observant, be careful, man. Understand that them, that that evil heart of unbelief starts in your mind so now you got to do some 
soul searching. Now you got to do some, uh, you got to point the finger back at you for a second and put that magnifying glass on what your thoughts is. And that's the thing about this truth. Why the apostle cabal always goes into it. You are your greatest enemy in this truth. You. But it's Esau, I thought, is you. But it's the nigga, is you, bro. Because that evil heart of unbelief can start up in you. It says, in the pardon from the living power. And that means everything you worked hard for, just poof, gone. 3 and 18, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. That's it. Non-believers. So as the brother was bringing out, you know, the story of how in this beautiful testimony he shared with us for edification's sake, the brother was bringing out how his family member being in jail now and ultimately being um, trapped into this system, into this pit of reincarceration and recidivism, which means going right back to jail. Um, you understand now that that's all. Even though he was preached the word, it wasn't mixed with faith. And he was, there's a different result for unbelievers than there is for the believers. So belief, oh man, the importance of belief is, cannot be, there's no understating the importance of belief. All right, you can't, you can't mention belief and faith enough. Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So don't even think about coming back to the Lord without faith. Well, now I know all the laws and I'll just keep them. That's great. What about faith? No, I got the law. All right, well, good. You'll be the exact, uh, ex, you know, example of what not to do very soon. It says, for he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we tell brothers to diligently seek the Lord for your reward, which is that rest that you can enter in. Because he promised it to the believers. That's it. First Thessalonians 1 and 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. So that, that's that faith. Where that faith is coming from. And the apostle Taha mentioned recently in the video. The Holy Spirit is the angels, man. Working on your minds. That you can believe that's why it's a power because there's a power behind what's happening it's not just the word and then chemical reaction in your brain this can't be scientifically broken down why some men start believing and others don't at the same word and in much assurance as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake First Thessalonians 2 and 13, for this cause also thank we Yahweh without ceasing, because when you received the word of Yahweh, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as in the truth. The word of men is just like, you know, legends passed down and, you know, just hearsay and, you know, you know, when men talk, it's you take it for a grain of salt. But here it is, when it's the truth, you don't take it for a grain of salt. And he's saying, we thank the Lord without ceasing, be ceasing because you received it the right way. Remember, there's seed that's sown. This parable of the sower and the seed. Some seed is, falls by the wayside, which means the beaten path, the walked path. They can't, it's not, the ground has to be tilled first in order to, for the seed to get deep enough into the soil to grow. So all the seeds that fall by the wayside will not be able to grow. Then the seeds that have fell by too many thorns will start to grow, but then the thorns will take down that, prevent that growth. And the thorns, Yahweh said, is the care, caring of the world and the cares of the riches and the wants and the lusts of the flesh and the desires of the heart. All these things can separate you. Your belief has to have a path where it can grow and flourish. And those people who become uh, reasons for your growth to be uh, thwarted or um, retarded or stopped, those people eventually have to be purged from, from you. The scripture says, you know, if 
you know, if your hand offends you, cut it off. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. Is that literal? No. Right? You got a man named Houston, a whole R&B singer, who cut his eye out for that scripture. That's not what it's talking about. He was also high on meth or something crazy. But on um, PCP or whatever. But the point of the matter is that your growth is what's the word? It's pivotal. It's, it's your spiritual growth is the most um, important thing there is in this world. It's to continue to grow spiritually. Everything else has to be adjusted. Every other part of your life. Your career, your mom and them, family members, everything has to make way for your spiritual growth because there is a reward that you are seeking from the moment you started on this path that the Lord opened up your mind to. Who just plays a video game and cuts it off right before the, you, you win? It says, but as in this truth, but as it is in the in truth, the word of Yahweh, which effectually worketh also in that in you that believe the effectual working. Um effectual man at great effect completely. Um the effectual working is like a divine uh confidence that the Lord gives you and competence in his word. And he helps you. He's working with you. If you could just imagine um, that the Lord just giving you support by way of angels, just moving things out of your way and keeping you aligned and giving you um, this uh, confident spirit and a strong spirit to be able to fight and ward off demonic demons of unbelief. Well, if you don't believe that's working on you, think again, because the Lord gives you the tools that you need to accomplish these things. You are not alone. I am here with you, like MJ said. Second Thessalonians 2 and 12, they, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And that's what we're talking about. Because you can't talk about believing, not believing in the pleasures in unrighteousness. You can't say one without the other. Usually the reason for them not believing is they have pleasure in unrighteousness. As his brother was going into again in the Beautiful thing, uh, testimony he shared in a vision in the dream. I believe his brother had a thing for a woman that was not his, it was betrothed or a man, a woman of someone else's, and he couldn't let that go, even though he knew what it would cause. <laughs> Pleasure and unrighteousness is usually the thing that defeats uh, believing in, in the truth. Is, is one or the other. You can't have both. That's what the hypocrites had. But you can't have both. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yahweh for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because Yahweh hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. He chose you to salvation. Don't get it twisted. We hear the, the deliverance out of this third world's war. But it says through sanctification, meaning to sanctify means to make holy. It says sanctification or its verb sanctify literally means to set apart for special use or purpose. That is to make holy or sacred from the Latin sanctus made holy as a vessel full of this Holy Spirit. So imagine that you're filling up a vessel with the Holy Spirit. That's us. It says sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. So we're filled, we're vessels filled up to the brim with the belief in this truth, with the spirit of the Lord, and with faith. Now, how can you move the same you've been moving when you were you wasn't filled with that before? You feel with that now. You didn't have that before. It says wherefore, this is James uh one and twenty one last precept. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness. Once again, the pleasures of unrighteousness. You don't, there is no room for that no more. See, you are a vessel that's been purged, that's been washed with the word, cleansed, 
sanctified, made holy, separated for special purpose and use. Fill with the, whole, the word of the Lord. You filled with the spirit. There's no more room for filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Right? Which anything that's superfluity is an unnecessary or excessive large amount of something. Yeah. What's that something? Naughtiness. We know naughty. Right? That's not a word that usually describes older people. But it just means this. Bad behavior. When someone does not do what they are told to do. These are grown naughty men. These are grown naughty women. They naughty. And they feel with the naughtiness. <laughs> These are children, man. These are grown kids. Nas made a song called Second Childhood. You better believe it. They filled. They filled. There are vessels filled with that. And we are vessels filled with the Spirit of the Lord because there was a sanctification process. The Lord set us aside, cleaned us, washed us, made us like chaste virgins with our minds because he took all of that nonsense out of our minds. All that naughtiness that we had and filthiness that we had, he poured it out, washed it, and then poured in the spirit of the Lord, which is a spirit that believes in the truth, which is the word of God. It says, to and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. So that's what we did. Lay, the, lay, lay aside the filthiness and receive with meekness the grafted word that is able to save your souls. In the NLT it says, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has power to save your souls. NIV says, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So, Lord willing, this video is edifying. Shalom to the brother again for the beautiful testimonial. This way you can find it. James Testimonials, Visions 5. Shalom to all the Akim and Akwa for listening. A double honors to the, my teachers and apostles uh, of Great Millstone and the bishops of Connecticut, elder bishops. And Shalom, until next time, DTA, Ababa Ball, and um, call me Sha'ala, Shalom.